All right, we're going to go through concept one of our cells unit for honor students on cell theory and organelles. So the cell theory is basically kind of basic principles that we understand to be true about cells. So they're going to kind of, it's going to kind of guide what we're going to talk through over the rest of the unit. So first is that all living things are made of cells. Second is that cells are the most basic unit of life. And third, all existing cells are produced by other living cells. So in this um, concept, this PowerPoint, we're going to be talking about one and two a lot. And then we're going to be talking about number three in concept three when we go through the cell cycle and mitosis. So kind of hold, hold on till we get there for number three. But we're going to go through number one and two in more detail. So... Although all living things are made of cells, like number one says, organisms can be two types. They can be unicellular, which means it's an organism composed of only one cell. An example is this bacteria right here. Bacteria are one cell. That's all they are. Whereas most organisms are multicellular, meaning they're composed of many cells. Um, this puppy, for instance, or you, you're made of trillions of cells, and those trillions of cells are organized into tissues, which are organized into organs, which are organized into organ systems, which all work together to make you an organism function. So all living things are either made of one cell or many, but regardless, they're made of cells. Now the cell is the most basic unit of life, but there's two types of cells that can make you up. You can be made of prokaryotic cells or eukaryotic cells, and we're gonna go over the differences now. So a prokaryotic cell does not have a nucleus, a eukaryotic cell does. I know you don't know what a nucleus is yet, or organelles, or some of these other things I'm gonna mention, but we will go through them as we go. Prokaryotic cells do not have membrane-bound organelles, but eukaryotic cells do. Prokaryotic cells divide and copy themselves through a process called binary fission. Eukaryotic cells do mitosis. Prokaryotic cells. Organisms made of prokaryotic cells are unicellular. They're just made of one prokaryotic cell. That is it. Whereas eukaryotic organisms can be unicellular or multicellular. So protists are eukaryotic organisms simply made of one eukaryotic cell. Whereas plants and fungus and animals, they're all multicellular eukaryotic organisms. Prokaryotic cells do have cell walls. They're made of something called peptidoglycan. Eukaryotic cells can have cell walls. Fungus and plants do, but animal cells do not. So we don't necessarily say in general eukaryotic cells all have cell walls because that's not completely true. An example of an organism that's a prokaryotic, made of prokaryotic cells, is bacteria. And then examples for eukaryotic Karyotic are animals, plants, fungus, protists, and you, you're an animal, so your humans are included in there too. All cells, regardless if it's a prokaryotic cell or eukaryote, have four things. They all have cell membranes, they all have cytoplasm, they all have ribosomes, and they all have genetic material. That's really important. So they all have a cell membrane. It's a green layer in this picture. It's the outer layer in this picture. The cytoplasm is the blue or the gray. It's the fluid in the cell. Ribosomes are these little dots we see floating around that make proteins. And then genetic material, that's floating freely in a prokaryotic cell, but it's, it's stored in the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell. So those are the things that they all have in common. Now we mentioned that eukaryotic cells in addition to those four things, have organelles. So it's important you know what we mean by that. Organelles are specialized structures within the cell that work together to help the cell function. I want you to think of them as mini organs. So all of the organs in your body work together to help you stay alive as an organism. Organelles all work together to help the cell achieve one common purpose, and that purpose is to make proteins. Remember, in unit one, we talked about how many different things proteins do. They are so, 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 so important. So make sure you don't forget that. Proteins matter. All of these organelles, as we go through their structure and function, work together for this common goal. Now, some organelles are specific to animal cells. Some are specific to plant cells. But as I flip between these two pictures, you'll notice that some of them are similar. They're in the same in both plants and animals. So we're going to go through these organelles, and I'll make sure to let you know if it's solely in an animal cell 
or solely in a plant cell. If I don't distinguish between the two, that means it exists in both cells. So keep that in mind. All right, the first one we're going to go through is the cell or plasma membrane. And at the bottom of each organelle slide, I'll have a picture of an animal cell, a plant cell, and a prokaryotic bacteria cell. That way you can kind of see where it exists in each one, if it is in each one. So the cell membrane or the plasma membrane surrounds the outside of all cells. It's made of two layers, and we call this a phospholipid bilayer. Hopefully that's ringing some bells from unit one. Its job is to control what goes in and out of the cell, and this is really important for maintaining something called homeostasis, which we'll learn about in concept two, but it's about maintaining this constant and stable internal environment. It's this outer layer in an animal cell. It's the second layer of the plant cell, because a plant cell has a cell wall on the outside, and it's the inner layer on a prokaryotic cell also. But all cells have it. All right, let's talk about this phospholipid bilayer. That just means it's bilayer, means it's two layers, and it's made of fats, and those fats are specifically phospholipids. If you remember, phospholipids have this phosphate glycerol head that is hydrophilic, meaning it loves water because it's polar, and it has these fatty acid tails, which are hydrophobic. They're free of water because they're nonpolar, and you can see the way they orient themselves in the double layer here. Within the phospholipid bilayer, though, there's proteins embedded throughout. So proteins and phospholipids, really important um, in this structure. There's also some carbs that provide some structural support, but it's not like a main player in the structure of the cell membrane. And we say that the cell membrane has a fluid mosaic model because it's composed of many parts, which is where the word mosaic comes in. But these parts kind of move around freely, so we say it's fluid. Another thing that is a structure that you're actually not going to see in any pictures is a cytoskeleton. It's a network of thread-like fibers that are made of proteins. It's not usually pictured. It kind of gives the cell a shape. Um, it would make the cell diagram really complicated if we included it because it's kind of embedded throughout. So they just kind of leave it out of the picture, but do know that it's there. They can help, it can help um, move organelles around, and it really is important for providing structural support for those animal cells because they do not have a cell wall like plant cells do and prokaryotic cells do, so it gives some good structure for the animal. All right, cytoplasm. It's got a jelly-like consistency, and it's mainly made up of water. And its job is just to hold everything in place. It also provides a solution for chemical reactions to take place in, which will be important in later units. You can see it's just kind of this empty space that it's pointing to in each of the cells. All cells have cytoplasm. All right, the nucleus. It contains your genetic material, your DNA. In this picture, we got four chromosomes in there. When the DNA appears spread out, it's called chromatin. So when it, I call, when I mean spread out, what I mean like if it looks like a wad of like a ball of spaghetti, that's chromatin. It's just kind of like not condensed, it's very loosey-goosey. But when it's condensed into like distinct X's or rods, it's called, we refer to it as chromosomes. We're still just talking about DNA here. The nucleus is surrounded by a nuclear envelope, that's this layout here, or a nuclear membrane. And it has pores in it, nuclear pores, that control what goes in and out. So think you have skin and you have pores in your skin that allow fluids and oils in and out. Um, and that's the same with the nucleus. Its job is just to protect the DNA and to control the activities of the cell because that's where your DNA is. We can see it's here in an animal cell, it's here in a plant cell, and it is not existing in a prokaryotic cell like this bacteria cell. So you can see this big red blob, that's just your DNA in a prokaryotic cell, just unprotected by a nucleus. Now you may be wondering, what's this red thing in the middle of the nucleus? That's called the nucleolus. All right, it's inside the nucleus, and its job is to make something called rRNA, which stands for ribosomal RNA, which makes up ribosomes. So it's right there. It's not in the prokaryotic cell, but we'll talk more about rRNA in a later unit. All right, these ribosomes, they're so important. They are made of proteins and rRNA, like we just mentioned. They're located two places. They are stuck on the rough ER, and they're floating in cytoplasm. And what they do is they make proteins in a process called translation, which is the second step of protein synthesis. So we can see them here. They're floating, uh, uh, floating around, 
or they can be stuck on the rough ER. So again, they're floating in the rough or on the rough ER, floating around on the rough ER, you know, just kind of floating around. Or in the prokaryotic cell, they're just floating around because there's no rough ER. The rough ER is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. It's pictured here with the nucleus, right there. It has ribosomes on the surface, which is why we say it's rough. It kind of hugs the nucleus. It's always right next to it. And its job is to make proteins because it has ribosomes on it. We can see it here and here and not in the prokaryotic cell. Now the smooth ER, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is right here. All right, it's got no ribosomes on the surface, which is why we say it's smooth. It's right there with the rough ER nucleus. Its job is to make lipids, so it actually makes membrane. And it can also help destroy toxins. Um, there's a lot of smooth ER in your liver cells. It can also be used to regulate calcium, which is really important for your muscle function. So in your muscle cells, there's a lot of it going on regulating calcium. You can see it here and here and not again in the prokaryotic cell. The Golgi. Golgi apparatus is a bunch of folded membrane. It looks similar to the ER, but it's not attached to the nucleus. And its job is to get vesicles of protein from the ER. And these vesicles are like mini carts. They move proteins around the cell. So we say the Golgi is kind of like a packaging center. It takes these proteins that are made by the ribosomes on the rough ER and in the cytoplasm. It processes them, it sorts them, and it ships them into different vesicles to go where they need to go. We can see it here and here and not in the prokaryotic cell. All right, lysosomes, this is this little circle. It's not a very um, distinguishable organelle, so I would never have you label it in a picture. Um, but you do need to know it contains enzymes and its job is to break down dead stuff, food, bacteria, old parts of the cell, harmful substances, all that stuff. It can also do something called programmed cell death, which is known as apoptosis. And we'll be talking about this more in concept three, but you can see it pictured in the animal cell. It is not in plant cells or prokaryotic cells, so this is solely animal cells. So please make sure you write that down. All right, vacuoles. They can be small and numerous in animal cells, like so, or it can be one large central one in plant cells, like so. They are existing for storage. They store water, nutrients, waste, all sorts of things. There it is in um, the animal cell, and there's that giant one in the plant cell. No vacuoles in a prokaryotic cell. All right, centrioles or centrosomes. They can kind of look two different ways. They can be pictured like this or like this. And the words, I've seen, I've seen it both words in so many places, so I've included both for you. But it's made of microtubules, and its job is it shows up during cell division, and it helps the cell divide by pulling chromosomes apart. It's right there in the animal cell, not in plant cells, not in prokaryotics. So make sure you label it as animal cells only. And we'll talk a lot more about this in concept three when we learn about cell division. Cilia and flagella. All right, cilia are like little tiny hairs. They're shorter and they're more numerous. And they're like tiny ores on the outside of a cell. There aren't any pictured um, right now on this page. Flagella are longer and fewer. They're about one to three. They kind of look like tails or whips. And the cilia's job, they're both in charge of movement. Cilia moves fluids across the cell surface, um, whereas flagella moves the entire cell. Um, it's not in plant cells. It can be in animal cells and prokaryotic. There's a flagella in that prokaryotic cell. It's animal and bacteria cells only. Cilia exist in places like your throat cells to kind of help move fluids down your throat. Flagella are like on sperm. They're helping to move that entire sperm to get to the egg to fertilize it. All right, mitochondria. Mitochondria have two parts, an inner membrane and a matrix. This is the inner membrane, and then the matrix is the fluid part. Its job is where cellular respiration happens, and that's a process. Here's the chemical equation, and we're going to talk about this so much in Unit 3. But it's taking glucose, which is C6H12O6, a simple sugar, a monosaccharide, and it's reacting with oxygen, O2, to make carbon dioxide and water and energy in the form of ATP. So it's basically just breaking down the food you eat, those carbs and such, to release energy as ATP for your cell to use. We call it the powerhouse of the cell, and you can see it in animal cells and plant cells, again, not in prokaryotic cells. Chloroplasts have two parts also. They're the grana, which are the stacks, and the stroma, which is the fluid part. 
This is where photosynthesis happens, and photosynthesis is a chemical reaction of carbon dioxide and water making sugar and oxygen in the presence of sunlight. So we're basically taking energy from the sun and we're storing it into energy and sugar, and we'll talk again a lot more about this in Unit 3. No chloroplasts in animals, but they are in plant cells, not in prokaryotic cells, so only plant cells. Cell walls can be made of a bunch of different things depending on um, the type of cell, whether it's in a plant or fungus or bacteria. It basically just protects and maintains shape, not in animal cells, but again, it's that outer layer in the plant cell, outer layer in a bacteria or prokaryotic cell. That central vacuole, I know we mentioned vacuoles earlier, but I just want to highlight these plant-specific organelles. Remember, just one massive central structure, it's a storage center. It's not an animal cell, it's in the middle of the plant, not in prokaryotic. All right, I want you to take a minute. I want you to try to label this animal cell. Label these 12 parts without looking at your notes. Then go back and see how you did, if you did it correctly. I want you to do the same thing for the plant cell. Again, there'll be repeats because they share some organelles. And then I want you to compare and contrast prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells and animal cells and plant cells, just to really make sure you're getting all this information. This was a lot, getting it organized in your brain. And that is concept one.